right, folks, welcome to this week's edition of the Blue Wave Sports Show. I'm Taylor Stewart. And I'm Tyler Tipton. Tyler, let's get it kicked off, no pun intended, with some FAU <laughs> soccer. Okay, our boys got another win this week. Yeah, to kind of say, uh, the boys' soccer team right now is looking like one of those uh, premier athletic teams mm -hmm. for uh, this university. I mean, yeah, our baseball team did a great job last year, but it's not baseball season mm -hmm. just yet. So, so far this year at FAU, who's the best uh, boys athletic team? I'd have to say men's soccer. I agree with you. And, you know, we have a freshman goalkeeper from France, imported all the way from France <laughs> to FAU, and he has – I mean, UCF wasn't able to score on him. I think that alone speaks a lot. Of course, we ended up tying the game. But, hey, you know, we tied with Marshall, tied with UCF, um, beat Howard by two, two to zero. It's looking up for our – you know, we've talked about the unsung heroes. It was kind of like last year was baseball. And I feel like this year, like you mentioned, yes. it's kind of our soccer team, you know, at the games. There's some fans, but it's definitely not nearly as many as there should be. Right. So, I mean, check them out if you get a chance because they're a great team. They're a young team, and they're doing well. They deserve a lot of praise. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, they're coming out and winning, you know, most of their games. Mm -hmm. We don't have that many winning teams here, unfortunately, at uh, Florida Atlantic. However, they're one of them right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're competing within the state and the other six state schools, Florida State, Florida, UCF, USF, Miami, FIU, okay, I may be forgetting one, don't spot me on it, but regardless, you know, we're competing with all these teams, we've mm -hmm. tied with UCF, mm -hmm. okay, um, I expect us to beat FIU yeah. for sure. Just until a couple weeks ago, we were undefeated, so I mean, that alone, mm -hmm. and this isn't like a couple games into the season, this was several games into the season, Yes. Um, so, you know, sky's the limit for them, you know, hopefully they will do really well in our conference, I think that'll put a huge... Um, kind of like a huge we'll stir be able, the state. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean? And it would look great, you know, we're brand new to the conference if we could, you know, make some waves Definitely. as uh, FAU keeps pushing in make our some conference. Blue waves. <laughs> so now to a little more tragic FAU news. Of course, this weekend we faced Marshall, and just when we thought everything was going well, of course, it didn't. Yeah, um, our boys' football team lost by one point against Marshall okay um, our kicker he missed an extra point he also missed a field goal our punt unit gave up a punt return touchdown for Marshall and just a really frustrating uh, disheartening loss yeah. Taylor because I mean this is not the first one of the season I mean it's very similar to the last home game where we go into overtime with Middle yeah. Tennessee State and we lose you know with that one I was okay with it because we did play well it was, it was just it was a matter young. of we, I believe that Middle Tennessee was just able to perform when they had to. And we had throughout the game, but just on that last possession, we weren't able to. Um, so I don't mind us losing when we actually get beat. I have a problem when we beat ourselves. And unfortunately, exactly. like you've mentioned, it's happened a lot this season. And this one, I would have to say, this has got to be the toughest loss an FAU really? fan has had. Because at one point, we were up by two possessions. I mean, and that was in the fourth quarter. I mean, it was ours to lose, and unfortunately we lost it. But we definitely have more to say on this. We're going to have to cover we'll this get, in our we'll panel. We'll get into that in the panel, absolutely. But get speaking some of, you know, the kicker, Mitch Anderson, you mentioned, we are going to turn now to our week's top and flop plays. I have to give the flop to Mitch Anderson. I hate to do this to a fellow Al, but, you know, this, you know, against UAB, three blocked field goals. It wasn't such a big deal because we ended up beating them by so much, so it didn't get as much stir and talked about. But, you know, you win and lose games with your kicker sometimes. And in the NFL, if you mess up, you're out. You don't get too many chances. Exactly. Then, you know, he met with uh, Coach McCormick. That was supposed to help him. Apparently, it didn't work. So I'm going to have to give Right, and we talked about this last week on the show with mm -hmm. him working with the baseball coach here. I see – no improvement if not uh, digress mm -hmm. I mean he did it's not about him missing a field goal because if he had made that extra point which extra points are kind of like a given basically mm -hmm. I mean you're right there on the goal line you kick it off I mean you know how hard is it to get through the uprights uh, had he had done that the game would have went into overtime yeah and, you know now we're we could be talking about a whole different thing up here yeah and I mean our offense and defense I think played well we got off to a slow start but I think you know, on both sides of the ball, we played well. So I have to give our flop to Mitch Anderson. Not for the field goal, because I understand that it happens. We're in college. This isn't the NFL here. It's Conference USA. You know, it's not the ACC. It's not the SEC. But you can't miss extra points. So flop goes to you, Mitch Anderson. You want to 
take yeah, away our top. That's okay. Yeah, a terrible flop or whatever. Uh, flipping over to the NFL here, top play of the week, I got to say, is a 17-yard strike from Tom Brady to Kimbrell Tompkins, okay, for the win against the Saints. And this just is classic Brady right mm -hmm. here. Third time you're going to give him the ball in the fourth quarter. You better believe he's going to seal the deal when he's down with his team. He strikes it here to Kimbrell Tompkins, and they go to win the game. I mean, I think the reason that, of course, this is so Tom Brady, as much as I hate to say it, you know, he performs well under pressure. And I think it wasn't just, it was the fact that it was against the Patriots. And because they are a top team, and, I mean, of course it helped that they were at home, but I think it just shows that, you know, don't count this Patriots team out yet. You know, they... They're Tom Brady one. is their leader, and when he has to show up and perform, he does. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, who was counting them out anyway? Were you, Taylor? Because they're 5-1 and one last time I checked. Well, I'm not a huge Patriots fan, but no, they uh, definitely, you know, the Broncos get a lot of talk. But I think that after this, especially that clutch play by Tom Brady, I think that now they deserve to kind of be in the talk along with some other teams. And speaking of the Broncos, the Broncos play the Patriots this mm -hmm. weekend, so – That'll be quite an eye opener. Who are you gonna? Let's do a. Well, let's do a little bit. Yeah, let's right do here. a quick one. We're gonna get more into the panel about predictions and the upcoming week and everything. But let's do this quick one real quick. Um, I'm still gonna stick with Denver, even though I'm you know a big believer in Brady and Belichick. I'm gonna go with Denver. I just feel they have more weapons mm -hmm. overall as a team. I think Tom Brady as a quarterback, you know, he's got more Super Bowl rings. So I'll say quarterback versus quarterback. Tom Brady's better, but Peyton Manning has a lot more weapons around him, so I'm going to go with the Broncos in this one. Okay, I hate to do it, but I have to agree with you. Um, you know, I just think overall Denver is the better team, and I do not think that the Patriots' defense will be able exactly. to stop them because they're just that good. And like you mentioned, is Tom Brady the better quarterback? If you want to go off Super Bowl rings, then yeah, he is. But when you – it's a team. So you have to go with the weapons he has, and he has them all. So I'm going to have to go with Peyton and the Broncos on this one. But stick with us, and we'll be right back after this break. 